Some of our friends have been asking to see what we've been up to lately. So we thought we'd bring you along and talk about who we are, what we're doing, and why we're doing it. See, Lynn and I are not from this country life. She grew up near Boston, and I grew up on the Illinois side of St. Louis. We both had several jobs, but ended up making a career in the military. And we have traveled the world and thoroughly enjoyed serving our country, meeting and working with some fascinating people from all walks of life. And speaking of meeting interesting people. We actually met on an aircraft carrier in the Arabian Gulf while on deployment. And uh, the rest is history. In 2019, as we were getting closer to retirement, we weren't 100% certain what we wanted to do, but we knew a decision was needed. With our military retirement pay, we had set ourselves up financially and didn't need to work for income to survive. But also, being too young to just sit around and do nothing, we didn't want to be someone else's employee. We had also shared the desire to move away from the city and have some space to breathe, as in, be far enough away from our neighbors. And we thought it would also be beneficial to get a little closer to our food. Hmm, further from the neighbors, but closer to our food. There's a little motto in there. And then the craziest thing happened in 2020, and the world was locked down. With all the supply chain issues, we realized that we not only wanted to live in the country and be closer to our food, but we had to provide for ourselves if needed. Decisions become Homesteaders was born. In the fall of 2022, while processing out of the military, we found a beautiful property in East Tennessee that felt right for our homesteading needs. Acreage, ponds, creeks, and a massive workshop. You know I love that. It is hard to believe that we are a few months shy of being here for two years. And we're excited to share with you a glimpse of our experience up to this point. Country life has certainly been a welcome change for all of us, including our city dogs. We truly enjoyed the frequent wildlife visits to the homestead, from cows somehow making their way through the barbed wire fence. Um, there is a bowl in my garden. Not sure how we got in the yard. To donkeys, curious of our vacant, at the time, chicken coop. To the wild turkeys and deer who visit us daily. They have become more like majestic squirrels to us. We knew we wanted livestock, but we weren't sure which animals to dabble in. So we started with chickens. After all, they are the gateway drug to homestead life, right? We ordered 40 chicks online, 10 laying hens and 30 meat chickens. We've had our share of lessons learned, but they continue to provide us with both meat and endless eggs. We are hooked. Early 2022, I found a Facebook page in our East Tennessee homesteading group that had meat cakes for sale. Well, we slipped. I mean, we jumped right in and ordered three feeders that were gonna be available that spring. And we became great friends with the breeders, like likely because of the constant communication with the gajillion questions that we had through the process, with the fencing and feed and predators and processing. Lynn worked on her green thumb at the same time in the garden last summer and again in this 2023 season. She has done an amazing job navigating garden design, dealing with clay soil, destructive pests, watering challenges. It keeps her busy during the growing season. We had an abundant harvest last year and even did some canning at the end of the season. Farm to fork or farm to table is proving to be such a satisfying experience. We often enjoy mills that we raised or grew 100% of what is on the table. So reward. Fast forward to winter of 22, a huge opportunity presented itself. Hey, so I'm thinking about moving. You wanna buy my animal? Excellent. I'm not sure I would recommend jumping into the deep end like we did, but we were blissfully ignorant of all that was ahead of us. Our great friends, the pig breeders I mentioned, were moving and selling all of their animals. Goats were not really in the plan, but we had a vision of milking sweet little goats at some point in the future. 
far, far in the future. Fortunately, we got four females that came with a weather, which is a castrated male goat. And a bonus LGD, or livestock guardian dog, James, has been the great protector of our herd and pigs. Yes, in the deal, we got more pigs, breeding stock. Two boars, one gilt, two pregnant sows, and one meat pig. We had never farrowed pigs before, but we were hungry to jump into the process and learn. Beginning this new livestock journey in the winter was nothing short of challenging. Frozen water, keeping them warm and providing enough hay to eat. We are officially breeders now of Idaho Pasture Pigs, or IPP for short. These pigs are bred to be sweet and gentle. Good mothers, they have grass as their primary diet. As a result, they are great homestead animals because they are sweet with the family and raised in just a small amount of feed and mostly grass. And to be honest with you, their meat is amazing. As we were getting the sow's farrowing area ready and the girls moved, Lynn was in full outreach and marketing mode, finding buyers and loving homes for the piglets to go once born and then weaned. So one area that we worked harder rather than smarter was that we didn't buy a working farm. Not being a farmer or even having any homesteading background, we didn't know what we needed for livestock until we needed it. And then we needed it right away. We cleared land and put in roads to enable access. Part of our property was in an area that couldn't be reached unless we drove through an easement. So roads were important. We seeded the pasture and had additional buildings installed, making life a little bit easier. We had an equipment barn built to help prolong the life of some of the equipment and supplies that we have. We bought a large shed that was fascinating to watch be delivered. And we put that on the top of the hill and that allows us uh, easier access to feed and supplies closer to the animals. We also got a package deal and had a greenhouse delivered at the same time. I now have my she shed. Oh, fences, think eights. Mm, yep, we were in pure reactive mode to meet our needs. This is not how we would recommend doing this. But we got it done in stages and it felt like an endless endeavor. When we first started, all pigs were on electric net fencing. We then had perimeter stretch woven wire fence installed around the pigs, goats, and rabbit area. Oh, did I mention rabbits? Yeah, well, we have three does in a buck. And if we allowed them to mate endlessly, we would produce over 700 pounds of meat a year, more than we would ever need or want. So the rabbits may end up for sale soon with some of the unexpected goats. Oh, oh yeah, I'll, I'll get to the goats in a minute. Now over the past 20 something months, we've acquired some equipment needed to both work the land and make it easier to get around. A tractor has made life so much easier than I realized. I seem to have a bit of an implement addiction. It's amazing what you can do with the right tools. Now I have to admit, I got this side by side because I had dreams of going to ATV resorts in Pioneer, Tennessee or Hatfield McCoy's in West Virginia. Unfortunately for me, it's armory purpose is now a feed vehicle. We have put over 300 miles on this thing and it has never left our property. I may have slipped again and pimped my Pioneer. Maybe that will be a topic worthy video. We have focused on streamlining processes to make our chores easier. At a minimum of twice a day, we ensure all the animals are fed, watered, and checked on to strive to do it as efficiently as possible. We have mental checklists that we go through to monitor for maintenance issues requiring attention. Life is enough things to keep us busy. While we love our animals and want to take care of them, we have tried to find ingenious ways of being as efficient as possible while still enjoying the process. But don't get me wrong, we've had our setbacks. East Tennessee gets all four seasons. We have had them all. And we've had a lot of rain. A lot of rain to deal with. So trust me, water is going to go where water wants to go. And sometimes that rain has even come with wind. 
We've had trees come onto our property, and some were donations from neighboring properties. This one was about 50 foot tall and landed across our new fence, and it landed in scary distance from our poor cheddar. Sadly, loss and trials are part of the homesteading life. We lost one of our original hens when we weren't able to clear a bound egg, and another passed with no reason whatsoever, at least to us, we don't know what happened. We've lost piglets and meat pigs and learned to continue to grow through it all. And not all challenges are all bad. Yeah, remember we talking about the four female goats with the male that was castrated? <laughs> well, while it wasn't part of the plan, the baby goats started dropping from all four. And soon we went from five to 12. The babies, or kids as they're called, have brought us more joy than we ever could have imagined. We grew grapes and turned them into some amazing wine. We've learned about processing pigs, chickens and rabbits. We've made sausage in a few different ways. We baked bread from starter, created new recipes from our garden, and even turned some things into crafts and gifts. We're enjoying this journey and we continue to learn and grow daily. We've been inspired by so many and want to continue to teach and guide others. So you may soon see a video of a how-to around the stead. Or a recipe from our produce. Or a stead talk about important things to know or think about in your home setting journey. Thank you though for joining us today. And we sincerely hope that you continue to follow along. Please tell us below what areas interest you most and what you might want to hear more about. But most importantly, don't forget, like and subscribe.